I find myself outnumbered in, in the rap game because there's so many men who talk about I'm a man because I'm providing for my family and I'm making money. But it's like what you're having to glorify to make that money, you just poisoned the mind of mm. 100,000 of your listeners to feed the mouth of one person in your house. Mm. You worry about feeding your son, but you just poisoned the mind of 100,000 people who just bought your album. Mm -hmm. That right there, that's not manhood. That's cowardhood, or that's ignorance at its finest. Mm. That's beautiful ignorance. That's ignorance dressed up, made to look real good, but it's still ignorant. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. It's Yeah, it's always tough when you start having expectations of someone because very rarely in life do we communicate our expectations to somebody. Like, Jay, this is what I'm expecting from you out of this podcast interview. I want us to talk about my new album. I want us to talk about my children's book. I want us to da-da-da. It's very rare that a person like me will come to the table and say that, and it's very rare that you'll be like, D, my expectation is, hey, bro, after we do the podcast, I want you to post it on your social media this many times, and mm. da, 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 Because that stuff doesn't get spoken clearly, you got this whole gray area of unspoken expectations that mm. exist in each person's head, but they were unspoken, and then you got how is each person going to react to their unspoken expectations not being met. Mm. But that's why I say just like fighting temptation with being in like a relationship or married, that's that's real. Like we can't ignore temptation just because you're faithful don't mean that you don't suffer temptation. Same way you gotta fight them temptations for friendships. That's why in my mind I can say, nah, I still love him. You know what I'm saying? Because did that hurt my feeling a little bit? Yeah. Did that make me motivated a little bit? Yeah. That yep. made me feel like, okay, cool, I gotta show you that I'm worth it, right? Right, right. Yeah, for sure. But that don't that don't mean I forgot everything we do do. Yeah. Outside of what people can see, right? Just like if we do a podcast, I don't know, and like you said, I might expect you to post it ten times, and you post it once, and it might hurt my feelings. But then I gotta, I gotta re-trigger my brain, like, bro, he pulled up, and he had to pull up. Mm -hmm. He posted you once, he ain't had to do that. Mm -hmm. He might not even like stuff on his page, but bro, mm -hmm. he might not even like the interview, but bro, mm -hmm. you gotta, we got, we gotta consistently do that as, yeah. as men, especially. And that's, I guess, that's what you call maturity and grace too. Yeah, yeah, maturity, maturity is grace. a part of grace. Yeah. You you learn grace as you mature. Yeah. Because you understand that, bro. Like, it's things that I probably did to rub somebody wrong, and I wish I could get grace because I didn't mean it no way. Mm. I ain't meaning nothing like that. People kind of be like, you don't like me. Like, this and that. I'm like, Wait, what? What I do? <laughs> That's why the best place to be in life, bro, is when you genuinely don't need anything from another person, but you are in relationship with them so y'all got a relationship but you're not in relationship with them so that you could get something from them mm. that's such a liberating peaceful place to be and to and a way to exist that's the good thing about being in atlanta to where everybody is trying to that's how I mean you really connected on some like yeah we out here clearly everybody that's out here they trying to be okay. upwardly mobile in a sin but we ain't connect on that type of time to where it feels like it's a chess move friendship. Mm. There's mm. so many chess move friendships out here, bro, of just like, yo, oh, this is the perfect move right here. Let me get cool with you, go watch the fight by you so I could really get the plug to go here because I'm trying to be here. But I can't get there without taking the baby step of getting cool with you because you're going to open the door to get there. Man, that's what, that's what this whole culture is revolved around, bro. Bro, and it's... Um Bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's just frustrating because what happened to those genuine friendships? It's so like I don't want to turn this into like some like I don't know like boohoo session, but it's just it's frustrating because like those as a human being, that's how we flourish as people. Mm -hmm. Like that's how you feel good. That's what feeds your soul. You feel me? Like your energy. 
And like when you don't have that, it's like, man, it's like you living every day for an opportunity and that can be just frustrating. Like you, like we said downstairs, like imagine you living every day just wanting somebody else or picturing this person being the perfect person for you, but you living with somebody. It's like, bro, that can be, oh my God, right? So, man, that's why I said it can be frustrating because like that's how it is. I had a friend that I knew from back home. I ain't gonna say her name, but like, he wanted to make every encounter with me an opportunity for his goals. And I get it, but it's like, that's naturally going to come. Mm. Like, we cool. Like mm -hmm. like you said, me and you cool. Mm -hmm. You got way more followers than me. And I'm just pointing out the facts, right? Mm -hmm. You doing a podcast with me is, is definitely could help me mm -hmm. for sure. But that comes from us just being cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't looking at the like, yo, do this interview with me so... You could post it and uh, maybe uh, Kodak Black could see it. Mm -hmm. But it, like now that I'm thinking about that, that's a fact. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a fact. But that's the furthest thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. But like you said, I feel good because we genuinely cool. Like, bro, come watch the fight in my crib with my mm -hmm. family. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a lot of that, though. Nah. It's not a lot of that, not bro. out here. And that is frustrating. Not out here. Mm -hmm. Dang. Mm -hmm. Wait, we started? Yeah, let's get popping. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm bro. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? J Hill, Mr. J Hill Podcast. We in the building. Uh, as y'all can see, a close friend, of, a really good friend of mine. Um, I try to be very like particular in my words. Um, really good friend of mine. Uh, we met during COVID. We did an interview versus, via like IG Live. Um, this is when I was trapping off the uh, Radio One emails. Uh, man, this guy ever since then been a supporter. I mean, a friend uh, for, for for my my day one listeners. If you hear me talk about Alex, my producer from back home, he's like one of them guys. Like, pray pray together, pray for me. Like, it ain't just this industry, man. And that means so much. I want to say I appreciate you putting, for being here. My guy D1 is in the building. What up, dog? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Uh, man, what's going on, brother? Man, this this is a uh, this is a great time because you know I know you got some special things going on in your personal life that mm -hmm. I'm very excited for you mm -hmm. you know about uh, in my life. Same thing, bro. It just feel like a season of growth, you know. So I think the reason why we got platforms is so that we can narrate our journeys for people because you got people that are studying our journeys in real time. They're mm -hmm. trying to learn how we doing what we doing, and I think. We won't be able to form a personal relationship with them all, but the more we can narrate our journeys, then it gives them something to go back and look at and study so that they could be the best version of themselves. Mm, and they can have a blueprint, something that we never had. There you go. Like that's that's what that's what uh we can leave for people nowadays is a blueprint to our success. Mm. If we take people in and if we don't just show the prize, but if we show the process. Mm. So I'm excited about Showing people the small wins, not just the big announcements, you know, like, oh, a big announcement, everybody. I just got selected for this or I just purchased this or that's cool. But let's let's talk about the micro steps that all, you know, lead to slowly but surely rising to the top. All right, come yeah. on, bro. And what people and, and the pain to it, though, right? The pain. I was talking about T.D. Jakes and Charlemagne interview and they were talking about how, like, on Instagram, they don't want to, like, you know show what's really going on. But basically, it's like if you're walking up the steps, people don't, like, when the wood steps, it, it creaks. But what happened is usually the, the the creek comes from the step that you're stepping off of. Mm -hmm. So in order to elevate, you got to go through those creeks. Because mm. when you're walking up the steps, and when you let go one, it creaks, but it's only for you to get to the next one. Mm. Right? So it's like, that's real. Mm. And, and to show people that it's super important so they can understand when they're going through it, we talk about mental health, and we talk about... um just all of this self-care things, but do we really care? Because if we did, we would share our, our, our hard times because when somebody else go through a hard time, they can look at it and say, it's documented. Yo, D1 went through the same thing, and it might still hurt, but now it feel a little better because it feels like I'm not by myself. I'm not alone. Mm. I, want, I want to warn people too, bro. We talk about success so much. I feel like Atlanta, this is a city where people come here to be successful. Mm. Success without God can be the worst thing that ever happened to you in your life. Mm. People need to know that. Like, you want this success, but I hear a lot of people just skipping or glossing past the role that God plays in that. If you achieve success in this 
evil, dirty, crooked world that we're in. And if you achieve success without having God at the forefront of that success, that can be the worst thing that ever happened to you. That can be the thing that will be your demise and mm -hmm. to your detriment because that success can eat you alive from within. You can become a prisoner mm -hmm. to that success. Mm. Success without peace? Mm. What is that? Success without peace? That, if, if that's, that's hell. Yeah. That's hell on that's, earth. If that's success. That's hell on earth. But see, people will call it success if they got a few hundred thousand dollars that they make in a year. Mm -hmm. Or if they feel like I'm lit on the ground, you know. They'll be like, dang, I am successful. But why doesn't it feel peaceful? You're right. That's because that's hell on earth. Mm. Disguised as success. Mm. Success is a costume, bro. Nah, in fact, it's crazy because even when we was coming up here, we were just talking about, like, what is it worth if we... If we get outside of our body for like a better words to be somebody else to throw it all away just for what we deem as success what is it worth mm. it goes back to that it's like is it really worth anything mm. i have people who tell me all the time d man you could be even bigger than what you are as a rapper bro if you just they say stuff like if you just cursed in your music mm. or if you just gave people more what they want you know and when i hear that stuff it doesn't even it doesn't even sound appealing to me to have to be somebody that I'm not in order to take a chance at maybe getting bigger. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I mean? Like I've I've had many decisions I've had to make over the course of my career to say, all right, right now I can give people what they want or I can give people what they need. Mm. And that's two very different things sometimes, you know, what you want versus what you need. And when you know what people need, I'm a... I'm a human being. I live in this world, too. So I'm amidst all of the darkness and the depression and the anxiety and the poverty and the racism and the violence. I'm amidst all this. So when I know what people need to say, I'm, I'm going to ignore that and give them what they want. And I feel like that make me mm. the most low down, dirty leader you, that I could be. It makes you worse. And that's <laughs> it's not funny, but that's the uh, we talking about, like me going back to church and stuff. That's like the hardest part of going back to church, understanding that, like you know better. Yes. Right. Like when you know better, you do better. Yes. And because we on earth, what like it like, success or not, this is just hell on earth. Like our whole mission here is to get back home. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you know better, it's like you gotta do better. But because we're our mind is played with so many dark thoughts and just evil thoughts, right? It makes it hard to do better because it's temptation, like. You wanna do what the, you wanna do what feels good, mm -hmm. and what feels good ain't always was really good for you and the salvation, right? Mm. So it's it, it's just it's funny to hear you say that because when you know better, you do better. But what people don't understand is how hard it is to do better. So doing better is definitely harder, but it's also more rewarding. For sure, and people need to know that. For sure. You know, just because something is harder doesn't mean we should run away from it. You should run towards it. Correct. We, I mean, as men, we should, correct. We should know that, right? Correct, correct. And I'm in an industry, bro, I find myself outnumbered in, in the rap game because there's so many men who talk about, I'm a man because I'm providing for my family and I'm making money, but it's like, what you're having to glorify to make that money, you just poisoned the mind of mm. 100,000 of your listeners to feed the mouth of one person in your house. Mm. You worry about feeding your son, but you just poisoned the mind of 100,000 people who just bought your album. Mm. That right there, that's not manhood. That's cowardhood, or that's ignorance at its finest. Mm. That's beautiful ignorance. That's ignorance dressed up, made to look real good, but it's still ignorant. Mm. I seen a post the other day, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Oh man, this is crazy. I ain't know we about to get into it like this, bro. You know how we do, man. Facts. <laughs> you know? Yo, let me see if I can find this post, bro. Yo, this is crazy. Oh man. Um, only because this is a candid conversation like this, but mm -hmm. this is what this is what, what you remind me of, bro. Hold up. I'm gonna find it, bro. I promise. Mm -hmm. This is what we talking about. Excuses make today easy. But tomorrow hard. Discipline makes today hard, but tomorrow easy. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. I like that. I, I like that, that direct, 
short to the point truth, man. Mm. Excuses. Facts. And that's what that's all it is though. But being fair, playing devil's advocate, right? That's a terrible word for this mm-hmm. conversation, but playing devil's advocate. It is grace and ignorance though. Mm-hmm. Cause we are here because we know better. We mm-hmm. choose to do better. Mm-hmm. There is so many people out there who don't do good, but we can give them grace because they don't really know what we know. Mm. So yeah, we can say it's easy to say you just killed or you just played a uh, hundred thousand negative thoughts into society to feed one person. But how much? How much do they really know though? Or do they know any better? Right? Do they know any better? So I think we can give them grace because they don't really know it. Well, I, we don't know who knows better yeah. or not. We don't know. Yeah. All we can do is we can't really judge them because the moment we start to appoint judgment, we become just as bad as them because we know better. Mm. Come on. Are we talking about Bible? I mean, mm-hmm. if we want to go there, let's go there. So we can't really judge those people. All we can do is try to give the knowledge in hopes that they will change. But at the end of the day, it ain't up to us. We know it was already written. Mm. So... Mm. It's really like a slippery slope when we had these conversations. So we, we're we not called to judge, but accountability is not something that anyone is exempt from. Mm. So it's like I think we are called to hold, not I think, I know we are called to hold other people accountable, mm. especially when they're in a leadership position. That's just like politicians. It's like, oh, you can't judge that politician? Like, they got a lot on their plate. Don't judge Donald Trump. Don't judge this person. Don't judge this person. Okay, I'm not judging, but... Aren't we allowed to hold you accountable? Like, mm. you're supposed to be leading us, you know? And that's my thing with so many public figures is when it's convenient, people want to be the spokesperson for the black community or for the hood or for their city. Or for God. Or for God. Let's be real. A lot Man. of people only praise God when it's going good. Man. Come, let's keep it 100. And a lot of people giving God thanks for blessings that God did not ordain. You know, uh, what we talking about? You hear about? me? Like <laughs> a lot of people, and they, and they need to they need to stop lying on God. And a lot of people saying God told them this. God, God ain't tell you that. God ain't tell you to make that. God ain't tell you to create that. But you are gonna say God told me? God, I, God will never tell you something that goes against His word. Mm. And God's word is not changing. So if you're doing anything that's going against God's word, don't say that that came from God. That came from you. And you trying to run behind God so that people can't mm. hold you accountable. I think it's a, it's a scripture in the Bible. I, I don't know the exact scripture, but it said that uh, anybody who um, in my church, guys, y'all can help me out when y'all see this. But basically, like anybody who adds to the word of God, God is going to add the pl- add the add the plagues of the burdens of the plagues to their life. Anybody that takes away from the scripture, he's going to take away the um, the glory or uh, the good from their life. So basically, like you said, don't change what God said. He, and, and that's literally written mm. in the Bible. Mm. Like, he says that. Mm. Like, don't add or take away from my word. If you do, I'm going to add the plagues. I'm going to add bad to your life. And if you if you take away, I'm going to take away the good that mm. that come from my word as well. So it's crazy that, like, and people do that all the time. But, again, I, I, I do want to leave with a little grace because a lot of people don't haven't seen these words. A lot of people ain't even seen these scriptures. It is up for, to people like us. To mm-hmm. to make them knowledgeable so they can see it. Right. I want to ask you this though, talking about accountability and judging. I feel like it's a thin line. Like, how do you measure what's what is it actually holding somebody accountable compared to judging somebody? Yep. So the difference is accountability is rooted in love. Mm. Accountability is also rooted in a desire to say, hey, I can actually help you improve either through me praying for you, through me walking with you through what you're going through or through me teaching you. Mm. That's what accountability is. I genuinely want to see you get better. Judging is simply just criticizing, just Mm. gossiping. I just want something to talk about. Who's an easy target? Whoever's a leader. Oh, this person a leader. Oh, they messed up? Oh, yeah, I'm about to just judge the heck out of them. Mm. Big difference. Mm, That makes sense. Yeah. If you truly, yeah, if you truly want to see people be the best version of themselves, then you are going to hold them accountable because it's like, dang, I don't even I'm not even holding you accountable so I could get something from this. I'm doing this so that you can truly get something from this. Mm. You know, a lot of me as D1, I want to see people walk fully in their God given purpose. Mm. And I see too many people in society that are flirting with their purpose. Mm. They're not married to their purpose. They are flirting with it. So they just simply aware of what it is and they see it. 
And every now and then they'll 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 walk in it, they'll dibble and dabble, but then they get back to that world. Mm. And they get back to them vices and they get back to that lack of discipline that disconnects them from their purpose. You heard me? Indulging in all in all the things that's disconnecting you from your purpose. I want to see people married to their purpose. Mm. So if me helping to lead the way for you through example, by example, is going to help you to walk in your purpose and be married to your purpose, that's my goal. If me holding you accountable for who I know you have the potential to be is going to help you be married to your purpose, then that's what I got to do. Mm. No, that's real. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. i see you there. I love it, bro. I love these conversations for real. I just, and, and like, it's funny because we having this conversation, but I love these conversations so much that it be, again, just being real, I'm human. And like, it be frustrating because it's like all the stuff that, that sells, that's hot, that makes you popular. It's like, it's not this for real. Like, it's a bunch of like, it's it's just, I it could be discouraging. I, 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 I got to disagree. For real? To a certain extent. We say all the stuff as if. Yeah, that's really ambiguous word to say yeah like like like, and it really makes it seem like it's impossible to to put numbers on the board or to win you know like like so when people say that i'm just like tread lightly yeah Yeah, that that that, that sounds like a person who you know that's a convenient excuse Mm. that's a convenient excuse when when we want to when we don't want to do the work to figure out like how can i master the art of being righteous, but being popping at the same time. That's hard. You know, it's hard. And that, but uh, you no, know, I'm saying it's hard uh, in the way like that's fire. Like, yeah, that's, that's okay. Fire. It's that's like, fire. hey, I, I like I'm that. I'm up for that challenge. I you like know that. what I mean? So let, speaking of that, right? Let's stay here. Let, um, it's coming in. I was telling you that, like, because I do want to do some background for the people that don't know. I want to be selfish in the interview. I feel like you've reached a level of success, and you, of course, you're still grinding, right? That is so. Um, admirable for for me because and we talked about this on the phone like you're super successful but it's way different than i'm assuming what it looked like when we you already told me yeah but the way you're super successful right now like you're really popping but it's way different than you imagined yes how did you get here i mean just going back to making the music with hot boys and being in new orleans Mm -hmm. like and being here, mm-hmm. right? Like, not. I don't want to ask if you did you would you see yourself here, but like, how did that journey come about to this point? Yep. So I just dedicated myself to excellence in my craft and diligence in my walk with God mm. simultaneously, not not one without the other. Because I did that, I've become great at the skill at using the skills that God gave me. But I've also become proficient at making sure that God is there for every step of my journey and of my 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 uh, my come up. So mm-hmm. that way it makes it to where I've seen a lot of doors shut in my face. I've seen a lot of rejection, a lot of people who told me you're not quite good enough to be on this. We can't sign you to this label nah i can't do this feature with you nah you can't be on this platform you know i've heard a lot of no's but because of my diligence to being great at my craft and to walking with god every step of the way it's made it to where any level of success i achieve instantly everybody in this world knows well i didn't put d in that position Mm. god opened that door for him Mm. and that right there is I think what truly makes God smile when he's like, yo, 
I'm going to make your success be set up in a way to where you can't even speak about where you've gotten to without mentioning what I did for you. Mm. And I think that's what that's what's been important for me, bro. Like at one time I was chasing buzzwords like I want to be signed to a major record label. I want to go platinum one day. I want to do features with Lil Wayne and with Nas and with just whoever I was looking up to at the time, right? And I realized that all of those things that I wanted, it's not like they really held any significance to me personally. They just sounded good to say out loud. Mm. What I really got the most peace from was just saying, I'm able to use my talents that God blessed me with of being a rapper, of being a public speaker, of being an educator, and I'm able to comfortably make a living for myself. Mm. Comfortably, when I stopped teaching, I was a middle school teacher back in Louisiana, right? I was making $39,000 a year when I stopped teaching. So for me, I learned how to be comfortable off 39 racks a year. That's before taxes. Mm. So, you know, they taking yeah. taxes out. You probably in the 20s now. I learned how to be comfortable off that. So for me, it was like, technically, if I go platinum, I won't be mad at that. But if I could just make what I'm making as a teacher off of being an artist, that would be amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? Once I recalibrated what my goals were, I started to be like, dang, I never was really married to any of those goals that I would be saying out loud. What I'm really married to is just being able to be myself and to be able to make a living off of what it is that I do. Make a living off of giving life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not make a living off of spreading hatred and death and darkness, but make a living off of giving love and light and life to people. Mm. Yo, so but when you say, like, you mentioned how you just kind of was attracted to these buzzwords, right, being signed to a major label uh, and so forth, but just understand, just knowing your story, you it ain't like, from my perspective, it ain't seem like you changed so much because even coming in the game, I think, your first hot song was like really challenging it Lil was. Wayne and the rappers yeah. from the words that they were saying. Yeah. So it ain't like you 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 made a significant change in my eyes. I don't see it. So I'm 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 wondering what was the biggest change from then to now. The level the level of peace that I had when I was signed to a major label versus the level of peace that I have now, they don't even compare to each other, bro. Mm. When I was signed. I was smiling on the outside, but dying on the inside. I contemplated suicide in real life in Nashville, Tennessee. I was really feeling like a slave to the record label that I was signed to because I wasn't in control of if my music could come out or not. Mm. It wasn't up to me no more. It was up to them if they liked it, when they wanted to put it out. Now, I have so much peace because I'm able to be myself I'm able to take a chance on whatever music I believe in and put it out. I'm about to put my 10th album out on September 1st, right? For me, the win is in finding joy throughout the process. Mm. So when I'm recording and when I'm able to use the producers that I want to and when I'm able to pick the artwork that I like and when I'm able to just be in control of that process, that's the win right there. What I realized is when I got signed, I wasn't, making any more money than what I'm making now. I was actually making way less money mm. than what I'm making now. But I realized that regardless of the money, bro, I had some of the biggest platforms of my career while I was signed. I remember being on the, uh, what they call it? The BT Hip Hop Awards, right? The Cypher. And I remember doing some uh, some showcases for Revolt TV and all this type of stuff that was nationally televised, and I just thought that was everything. But then I realized, man, these people like me. They don't care that I'm signed or not. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for a minute that it was being signed and it was being in the industry that was making people really rock with me. But I realized that like my joy is contagious. Mm -hmm. My joy is my weapon. So I gotta use that weapon everywhere that I go. Whether I'm signed or not signed, like nobody, nobody really cares about that stuff. And 
in terms of being independent, a lot of artists, they don't want to, they don't want to admit that you have to have business acumen mm. to be in, independent. And that business acumen is something that, thankfully, I'm a double threat because not only am I a talented artist, but I've been a formally trained businessman since college. My my degree, I got a degree in business administration mm. with a concentration in marketing. You know, so I've been knowing and understand what this stuff, I just had to take a chance on myself and believe that I was worthy of the mental, emotional, financial investment. Because if I'm not investing, we all invest in our time, our energy, and our money into something. Do we believe in somebody else's company more than we believe in ours? Do we believe in another person's idea more than ours? Do we believe in another person's creativity more than ours? And I was like, man, I only live once. If I'm too scared to chase my own dreams, then my life is worthless. Mm. But it's, it's it, it, it. But we can't ignore. It's some benefit in having that back end, though. That financial back end. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's benefit. What, what's the benefit? <clears throat> um, hypothetically, mm-hmm. let's say uh, more visibility, which can get you more money in the long run, right? All right. So let's say you know, I was just talking to Shorty Shorty about radio. And we, as much as we can be um, emotionally tied to the fact that we want radio support, it's a business at the end of the day. Yep. And I say that to say, when you have backing, they can put, they can dump money in different terrestrial radio stations across the country, mm-hmm. right? Which can get you more publicity, more more um, fans, and a bigger audience. Mm-hmm. And eventually, that can make you more money down the line, even if it's not in that moment. Okay, so radio is something that very few signed artists ever get a real budget for a single that gets pushed at radio. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest artists in the world that we can name right now, it's like, dang, but they not they not all over the radio. Why not? Shouldn't that be automatic? Once I realized that that you could be signed and the record label could still choose not to put that bag behind your music, that's when I was like, dang, bro, like What's the what's the benefit? No, I mean that's facts. If you if you come in at that artist, but it's still some. I mean, we still had them. I say for lack of better words, them hoop dreams of like be, becoming that artist. Like for example, I don't know, uh, sexy red. I think that's her name, mm-hmm. or Glorilla. Like these are the ones that I'm assuming that had the marketing bag, right? Yeah, you might come in and you might not be the one. You might not have the leverage, but if you continue to work, climb the ladder, you could eventually be that artist who get that budget. Mm, mm. That's real. That's real. And you gotta ask yourself, are you down to are you down to take that chance? Because along with that chance comes you gotta sign a five album deal and you gotta give away anywhere between five and maybe fifteen years of your life to being signed to this label. Mm. So is that worth the possibility that they gonna say, Oh yeah, we about to put that bag behind your song? Mm. You know how many songs had that bag put behind them? And that song still ain't blow up. Yeah. So not to say that it doesn't work. We clearly see radio producing hits and superstars every day, you know. But um, I feel comfortable saying, like, I tried it. And I went in the office with so many different songs. You know, when flew up there to New York, pressed play on a whole bunch of different songs I was recording. And that I was excited about, that I thought would be great at radio. And I heard no time after time. Nope, mm. nope, nope, nope. I heard no every way it could be. Nope. Nope. Mm. Nah. <laughs> nah. Like I heard He's no like watching uh the uh the, what is it, genius uh documentary all over again when Kanye West was going into the studios like, nah, bro, that ain't it. Bro, literally, literally. So it's just like, all right, uh as far as being signed, it can definitely it can definitely be a very powerful like I I'm in I'm just gonna tell you, I'm in a position now where anything that the record label could pay for for me, you know what I'm saying? I could pay for it on my own. Mm. So then it's like, do you believe in yourself enough to put that bag up behind yourself? Mm-hmm. And not many people do, you know? But that's not a position I was in. When I got signed, dog, when I got signed, like, I needed that money. I needed that advance, mm. you know? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna really go in depth in terms of telling people 
what my experience was like, why I signed and what I signed for and what I went through or what I got from it. I'm going to really go in depth in terms of telling people that because there was always just this curtain up and I was so curious, like, man, what's behind that curtain of being signed? Like, what's it really like? And not just the horror stories, but like, tell me the 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 good, the bad and the ugly, you know, and I didn't really have that information. Mm. All I had was the success stories. All I had was, dang, I looked up to cash money and they signed to Universal. So them signing to Universal must be what got them there. You know, but I'm not hearing about all the other labels and the other artists who signed too. who for every one cash money. How many other labels and artists you think didn't make it? No, that's a lot. Probably, probably, probably 10 don't make it for every one that does make it. Yeah. You know. Wait, so how much, <clears throat> who you signed to again? I signed to RCA Records. How much they give you? They gave me some, you know, some, some little bread, you know what I mean? How much they give they you? Get, uh, how much you think they gave me? Uh, my the first day that come out, I would say, like say twenty or twenty five. Oh no, no, we came for more than that. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't, I ain't gonna. Wait, how nah, much? I know, is, I know the baby recently. I mean, he, he got said two fifty. I saw that. He said, I think he said he got two fifty. Two fifty for a signer, and oh, then I he said, it was he, and okay, then he said he went to the uh, what you call so it? So this is what ten plus years ago. I signed. Uh, I signed ten years ago. Exactly ten. So how much? I you signed got? ten years ago. You said you weren't going duck with it. How much? <laughs> Okay. Like he heard in depth, he said, "Oh, I'm about to get the whole story I, I out deep, man." Just know that the amount of money that they gave me at the time, it you might just say the number. It now. quadrupled my net worth. You know what I'm saying? Like I like it. It was it, it made it to where like I needed that. I needed that bread. And when I got when I got in advance, ironically, it wasn't it wasn't like a oh I made it type of moment. It was just like. I could breathe now. Bro, are you writing a book or something? Because why you ain't trying to yeah, tell me? Yeah, right, well, yeah, yeah, you ain't telling me the yeah, number? Like, yeah, the yeah, number bro, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm about to put my first book out, but that's for the kids. That's a children's book. But I got, yeah, bro, I got Okay, because like I'm like, bro, what, is, what are you hiding? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. funny It's funny how, um, how people think that you get so, so, so much money when you get signed. Like, them days are over with, bro. Mm. Like, I don't know what people really be thinking. I don't even know, just my perspective, even with the podcast thing, I would love to be on the network, but it's like, by time, all of the stipulations and what they want you to have to sign you, it's like, it's not even worth signing to you because I wouldn't, I would have the money. Like, by the time I get the numbers that you want me to have, wow, it's like, I don't need to be signed to you because wow. I could just take my numbers and make the money for myself. So what can, what can... A big podcast network do for an independent podcaster that that you can't do on your own. Outside of asking for those numbers, is a lot. So if we if, if they're not requiring these numbers, which they are, mm-hmm. so I guess this is imaginary conversation. All right. But if, let's just say they say right now, uh, definitely a bigger audience, right? Opportunity for a bigger audience. But then it's like sometimes I feel like knowing the business be hindering me because I know too much sometimes. Because think about it like this. You can have, you can be signed to a, a, a network with a YouTube following of, let's say, two and a half million subscribers. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're coming to watch your show because it's big YouTube platforms who have other shows who still do regular amount of numbers. Mm-hmm. So it's no guarantee. Mm-hmm. But let's just say for, for, for Six and Giggles, we just having fun, right? It's an opportunity mm-hmm. to, to have uh, more audience. Okay, one. Um we can't ignore that people are shallow, so it look good, okay. right? How many times we see people, like, I don't know, you might see a video, it could be one of the best videos, but it has zero views, you're not gonna look at it. It just is what it is, that's just how we think, how we, how we, how we, um, so it could be a good look. I mean, it's a few opportunities, but again, that's really just, mm. that, that ain't a real conversation because they want you to have 50,000 downloads before they look at you. Really? 50,000 downloads, you know how much money I'm going to make from that on the audio side? They want you to get average 100 to 200,000 views on on a YouTube every video. Bro, you know how much money I'm making? Like, why would I sign to you for real talk? Can we get a, a timestamp? Dylan, you can uh, um, uh, mark this out. Mm-hmm. I just had a conversation with They like, bro, you want to, um, they say, yo, I want we want you to do the interviews here. Okay, cool. Then I'm saving money because I don't have to pay for the studio. Makes sense. 
but they got a stipulation on a, the people that I, I can bring. It got to be only, pe only people with 100,000 followers. Okay, so what do I do with the people who don't have 100,000 followers? I got to take them back. Now that makes no sense because I'm giving you, I'm bringing exposure to your business with my bigger my bigger guests right. when I could just keep the exposure for myself. Mm. It makes no sense. But I'm sure they're giving you something in no, exchange for they're that. they're giving, you recording the space. Okay, so so that's the form of payment is 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 taken away from an expense that you currently have. Not even they just look at it like I look good in front of Bel Air. Gotcha. We cut that name out. Even with he cut his name DTLR. When I started my freestyles, right, they literally told me that the reason I was so successful was because DTLR was on the wall. Literally, bro. I left. I painted no ghostwriter. I can't make this up. Show the show you was just up here. I painted no ghostwriter on on um my studio wall that I had. Mm -hmm. We did two million out the gate, way more than anything I did with the company. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I feel like me knowing these things is a detriment sometimes because now I'm my mind is already placed. So it's like, do I want to get signed? Because by the time I I'm ready to be signed. It don't. It wouldn't make sense. What kind of what kind of a profit uh, split and and revenue share do they usually do? If if you are if you gonna start having your show be on a big platform that has two million YouTube subscribers and you one of the shows in their network, how does that work? Um, I don't know because I haven't had a lot of conversations. But what I will say is just from assumption, and this is all right. This is another benefit. So I know what well, I don't know, but I'm I'm assuming that. A company will get you, and you can keep your YouTube um, numbers. You can keep the money from YouTube. You can own your IPO and all that. But what they will do is they'll be in charge of, like, um, sponsors. And because companies have, like, let's say radio, radio, that's where they flourish at. They, 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 they stay alive and they stay um, above ground because of ad dollars. So because they have the connection with ad, ad, ad revenue, they get people to, to have ads on your show and then – They'll even like give you a, a small percent of that and they take the most of it where well, you could keep everything else, something like that. So it won't be a, I don't think it'll be a revenue split with YouTube, but, but it might be, it mm -hmm. might be. But that's where I'm, my, from what I hear, it's usually like the ad split. It's the ad. Yeah. And, that, and what I will say is, so you ain't eating nothing off of the YouTube. No, you would. I'm, I'm, yeah, you would keep all. But if YouTube. you're on their channel, like how do they even, yeah, yeah I don't know. That's, that's the, a, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 70, 30, I would assume. I don't know, 60, 40, maybe. I don't, I don't okay. know. Okay. I would okay. think that's fair. But I mean, that is one other benefit when we talk about signing because if you ain't out here in the phone books, calling people, building these relationships to get these sponsors, is a lot of people ain't getting these ads. Like, mm -hmm. you feel me? And, 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 and a lot of times, it ain't just a email. People think you could just email these companies, hey, I got these numbers. Nah, like, a lot of these ads come from real, genuine relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why people got the same ads. We look at Million Dollars Worth of Game, um, New Amsterdam been on there for, for years now because they have that rapport, that relationship. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean. Yeah. So what's the, what's the goal of, uh, what's the goal of, like, entrepreneurship for you is there is there a certain dollar amount is there a certain uh is there a certain metric that you that you identify like yo once i hit there like i i know i've made it i'm not even there yet bro like my goals i have like be something like them steps like my goal right now to be completely honest with you bro is to replace my jobs and i don't even talk about this usually but if i the, the moment i can so it's crazy. I have multiple jobs and like even like I mean not have multiple goals, and I'll do myself a disservice. And even when we could block this on my team, right? Like I think different goals, like being able to I want to be able to have a team to myself, mm. right? So not having to share my team with other people because of opportunities and just because they got to take care of what they got to take care of, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able. To, one of my goals is to pay my team full time, right? So like this is your full time job. Mm -hmm. Um, and my, my other goal is to be able to just replace, like, take care of my, my home comfortably with this. Mm. That's just what I'm seeing now. Everything else mm -hmm. about the millions and the number one, like, that's not even in my foresight right now. Right. Just to be honest. See what I mean? Like, that type of stuff starts to matter less and less yeah. when you really in this stuff. Yeah. When you on the outside looking in, it's like... 
Yeah, I, I I need I need those accolades. <laughs> now, when you in this stuff, yeah. man, this stuff is about providing and about making a difference. You know, mm. truly, truly making a difference. Uh, I wanted to ask you this though, because it, it seems like you're super grounded and like super contempt in a good way of where you're at. But with that, where where does the chip come from to keep going, or do you even have a chip? Of course, brother. Where where is that? Where does that come from? Because it's like you're so grounded. What what is the chip, brother? I'm fighting a spiritual war. So mm. the chip comes from all the evil that's present in this world every day that I see. Mm. So growth for me means that I have an opportunity to reach more and more people and push my light upon them mm. and be able to you know give them that motivation, that inspiration that they need to live their life with mission vision. You got the blind leading the blind out here. Mm. You got so many people that's blind, but they got millions of dollars, millions of followers. And they leading other blind people who's like, yo, I, I can't see nothing, but you know, from what I'm hearing, this person right here seemed like they, they, you know, they, they pushing me in the direction I need to go. So they're being led by somebody else that's blind, but they don't know that that person is blind because they're blind themselves, you mm. know what I mean? And I'm trying to, help cure the blind with what I call mission vision. Mission vision is to where you can see where you're going and where you're going is predicated on whatever your God-given mission is. Mm. Bro, if this wasn't a God-ordained mission for me, I would not be no rapper, man. I had to make up a name, D1. My mama ain't named me D1, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a character that has had to get created, a name, you know, a stage name. I have to go on stage, I have to, uh, I have to, you know, turn on the the charm and the extra layer of charisma and the look at me. Let me share, you know, all these details of my life with y'all just to hold y'all attention. That's not natural, bro. Mm. Like I'm David Augustine Jr. At the end of the day, I'm in this game because I recognize this game gives me an opportunity to reach people that I could never otherwise reach. But this ain't something that I'm uh. This ain't something that I'm doing if I don't see how I could be, you know, serving God through this. And that's the problem, bro. People don't want to talk about how is what you're doing bringing glory to God. Mm. They don't want to have that conversation. They want to talk about providing. And, I, well, I, I could talk about how what I'm doing is providing for my family. Or I could talk about how what I'm doing is, you know, helping helping me to come up and 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 come from the bottom and first generation of wealth man that don't have nothing to do with are you serving god though mm. with your platform and i'm here to i'm here to say that the people that's not serving god with or without a big platform if you're not serving god hey you still got time but mm. your time is running out yeah they talk about the last days bro yo it's oh there's so many questions I got. It's like I'm trying to like, I wish I could write them down as we speak. But speaking of that chip, outside of what we know we should do and what we shouldn't do, right? Outside of that, I'm going to talk to to David right now, right? Like the human, right? That got to be frustrating at times to see bl the blind mm -hmm. with such a big platform, mm -hmm. right? The, the blind... Who, who is flourishing and yeah your, your, your dreams might look different and you might seem successful but do you ever feel frustrated like bro like as almost like man not that should be me but like bro all these guys are flourishing and i should be floor i'm the one that's really trying to put something that matters mm -hmm. like do you feel those feelings at times of course but i know that when you're doing god's work it's not supposed to be easy mm. if it was too easy then i probably wouldn't be fighting the right fight so I got that underdog mentality, but it's like an underdog knowing that man, I got, I got the cheat code to like I've won already. That's the thing. That's the thing, Jay. People think I'm competing with them for the most streams or the most followers or getting booked the most or something. No, bro, I've already won because of my relationship with God. Mm. I have peace. That's priceless. Whether I die today or whether I got a hundred more years on this earth, I have peace and I know where I'm going when my life is over with down here. I've already won. Now I'm in this game 
because I have time that I've been blessed with and I have talent that I've been blessed with. So I'm going to use my time and my talent to get in this industry where I know my presence is needed Mm. and it's supposed to be hard and I'm supposed to feel like the underdog. But it's like the underdog who got buku confidence because you know and like, bro, at the end of the day, I got what people need, but I just got to figure out. I was on the phone with my man uh, earlier today and we were talking and he said, D, it's like, we got the cure, you know what I mean? It's like we the doctors and we got the cure, but the patient that you're trying to like, you know, stick the the cure in in, in their vein, they just keep moving. You mm. know what I'm saying? They keep moving. So because they're moving around, you like, all right, I gotta I, I gotta be patient. I know I got the cure. I got something that you really, really, really need. But you just keep moving around. You keep moving around. So our goal is to just say, hey. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to love on you. I'm not going to desert you. And I'm going to be here because I know I got this cure. Mm. And when we get those opportunities, oh, you finally stop moving. All right, bam, you finally ready. Cool. Let me make sure I get you right, man, because you've you been hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's get you right. That's how I feel being in this game. So I got to have longevity, you know? This is my, this my 15th year, bro, like being a rapper. 15th year. That, that stuff feel good because I feel like, I'm really so amped up to just keep going and I got so much more to do. And I look at it like I show you downstairs who I was on FaceTime with recently and and all this type of stuff that I'm knowing. Me being in this game is never supposed to feel easy, but I can also tell if I'm making a difference or not. And I'm I'm definitely, definitely, definitely making a difference. Mm. Also, also making a... uh, you know, making a living, bro. Like, yeah, you know, I don't brag on that that side of life. But, I mean, it should be noted, though. It should be spoken on. It sure. probably should be noted because my boy was just saying, you know, some people tell me, like, man, if you talked about the amount of money that you have or if you talked about the awards that you received or if you talked about some of your accolades more, then that would make it easier to reach some of the people that you're trying to reach. And I disagree. Mm. Because the people who have changed my life the most, it wasn't because of what they had. It was because of who they were. And that go back to the first question you asked me when I came in here. And that's like, that's why I say at the end of the day, love is still love because it ain't about what he got, but it's about who he is. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that can hurt my feelings or make me feel a way. But that can plague my thoughts to make me think anything less than this man. That's facts, bro. And that's what it was. That's exactly what it is. That's facts. And when you stop forming relationships with people out of what that person can do for you and you form relationships out of just the quality of who that person is, Mm. you have a level of peace that's unprecedented Mm. because you're grateful for anything that person gives you or does for you, but you're not mad at them because of what they don't do for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you got a lot of grown men and women who got a sense of entitlement nowadays. And that entitlement comes from deep down, they feel like, man, if you further along than me, you need to put me on. Mm. And I think that that put me on mentality is what plagues the black community. Because we as a people, we be wanting people to put us on so much that oftentimes, we can't even open our eyes enough to realize they're not even fully on themselves. <sighs> they one and a half steps ahead of us. Mm-mm-mm. They ain't fully on, man. Man, I tell, I was just telling my homie, uh, shout out to my guy Fats. I was like, man, never measure your uh, your growth by my success. Like, never do that because, like, like he do interviews, and I was saying, bro, you got people that I I wish I could have had, bro. Like, yeah, this is great, and I don't want to take nothing away from me. But it's like, bro, what you're doing is great as well. And don't ever forget that. Mm. Because it's so easy to look at somebody else. And even with the relationship, like everything we were talking about, bro, it's so easy to look at somebody else's grass and how it look, but not understand what they're doing for it to look like that. Mm. Even if even if they're not worn it every day. Even if they, like, I had uh, Miss Skittles on there. She's like, bro, you never know. Like, she probably putting, she probably got fake grass. You never know. Like, Somebody, mm. you might be looking at somebody's grass. They might have bought it from Home Depot. Mm. And you talking about, oh, I wish my grass looked like that. Mm. And you here slaving in the dirt trying to find real authentic pieces of grass and how you can make it grow and plant seeds and stuff like that. And you looking at theirs like thinking yours should be looking like that whole time. It's not even real. Mm. Right? So it's like, man, that's, it's, bro, entitlement, just 
looking at other people's success, all that, man, it's 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 a it's a big detriment to our careers and our mental. And was the hardest thing about it is because we could talk about this all day, but it's so easy to fall in temptation because what we keep in our head all day. We on social media. I'm not I'm not exempt from this. So I'm not just like I don't want to seem like I'm holier than thou because I I fall into this sometimes as well. But I gotta tell myself, keep myself grounded, like bro. Nah, when you see these videos, people in relationships, and you see these videos, I'm talking about everybody in relationship, you see these videos talking about what man should do, woman shouldn't do, and all this and all that. It's so easy to fall into, well, my person don't do that. Mm. And that's just not, bro, that's not how life's supposed to be, bro. Like, bro. we got to be, stay, bro, man, this is, hey, well, when it we can talk about this all day. All day, bro. When it comes to, to, to relationships, you could either choose to love a thousand people one way, or you could love one person a thousand ways. Mm, mm, mm. When you choose to say, I'm gonna love that one person a thousand ways, that right there, that still puts a challenge. I did a uh, I did a podcast yesterday, matter of fact, they were interviewing me, and dude on the podcast said that nice girls are boring, mm. right? So he was like, yo, he was talking about himself. He said he wants a, a HOE. Like, mm. that's, that's what he wants. That's the type of girl he wants. He said, because they're more fun, mm. right? And what's the definition of fun? What it means to you might be different from what fun means to me. Mm. Might be different from what fun means to any one of them, right? So what it means is, based on how we structure our brain and our perspective of who we're with, we can either choose... Mm to have gratitude and appreciate the challenge that comes along with the person we're with and the fun and elements of being with that person. We can either choose to view it from that standpoint or we could choose to view it from the standpoint of, although I'm with this person, I'm not with these people. Dang, if I was with these people, boy, it would be so much more lit. But you don't know what you would be doing you or don't, lacking if you bro. was with those people. And you know it's crazy? Because everything we talk about, the career, the music, the relationships, the friendships, it's all literally just one thing still. Like, it, it, it's your, your thought process. It's perspective and thought process. Yeah, well, because even, it's like, bro, it's so many people who aren't successful because when we go back to the excuses, right? People aren't able to be disciplined in whatever they're doing. If it's the relationship, if it's the career, if it's the, uh, if it's faith, if it's the, 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 the religion, it's, you're, they're not able to be disciplined and and just stand on something and walk through the hard times. We want it easy. Mm. We want to make excuses for ourselves. Mm. That's why we have so many. And and again, I'm not no better than I don't want to say I'm judging. It's just, bro, you you gotta go through something. Mm. Like what happened is, the, and just from my experience, like the devil make it easy for you not to do good, not to be righteous. He makes it easy for you. Mm. So you think it, you think you thanking God, but it's not even God. It's the devil. He's making, he's opening the doors for you to walk. To hell, literally. He's a master manipulator. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, well, even when we talk about relationships, it's like, bro, like I talk about like being faithful, and I tell my audience this all the time because I don't want to, again, I'm not trying to come up with no Derek Jackson. I ain't trying to judge my man or nothing like that, but it's like, mm -hmm. I tell people, bro, it's, as a man, it can get hard sometimes because temptation is real, and I'm a human. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a man of flesh, right? So it can get hard. But none of this don't, I tell people all the time, none of this don't make me who I am. It's about who I am when nobody looking. The mm -hmm. fact that I can have temptation or think about temptation, but challenge myself and get back on, on track. That's who I am. Because I love my woman and, and, I, and, and outside of my woman, I love myself more. I want to be right with God. Mm -hmm. And I understand this is what's going to get me right with God mm -hmm. before I can be right with my wife. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't, bro, it's like mm -hmm. people don't be, like, I don't know. It's like people just be wanting so many, make excuses for themselves and like, yeah, man, but, 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 yeah, I'm going to do this, but, 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 man, no, fuck. Yeah. I'm sorry for my yeah. language. Like, forget all that, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, now we got to do is right. Man, you know what it is? I want God to be able to trust me more than I care about people liking me. Come on. Bro. When you start thinking like that, your whole world changes, G. You hear mm -mm -mm. me? Mm -mm. When people are like, dang, I want God to be able to, not not like me, God created us. Of course, he going he gonna to like us. He going to love us. I want God to be able to trust me mm -mm -mm. more than I want people to like me. Bro. And But again, we, that's why I said all we talking about is the same because everything, we talk about credit. We talk about relationship. We talk about everything. Like, think about it. Like, I want my credit with God to be an 800. Mm. But a lot of us can't even keep our credit 
on on earth to be 800. Correct. Because we not disciplined. Correct. And again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to point fingers. I don't want to seem like I'm that guy pointing fingers because I'm... I'm human as well. Mm -hmm. But it's like the moment we start to think about like, I want my credit with God mm -hmm. to be 800. Yep. Right. And that comes with doing people right. Yeah. When, when we talk about friendships, like I'm not going to, I'm not a slimy nigga. Mm -hmm. And it's, it ain't because of how much I love you. Mm -hmm. It's about how much I love me and the man upstairs. That's it. My mom's always told me like, you got to love God, Jesus, then yourself. That's she always it. said it coming up. Mm -hmm. And then you can love somebody else. Mm -hmm. But until I love myself, I love God, and then mm -hmm. I love myself, I can't love you. So mm -hmm. I used to tell my girl this, and she used to hate this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not faithful to you because of you. I'm faithful to you because of him and then me. Yeah. Because I want to be right with him. Yeah. So it's like, bro, that's yeah. why we could talk about this. So it's like when yeah. people, people don't understand it, but, that, but it shows in our everyday life. You can't be successful at what you're doing because you can't be disciplined enough to stay on the right track. You can't be a, in a successful friendship because you can't be disciplined enough when somebody hurts your feelings mm -hmm. to even if you feel some way, the challenge is thinking like we were just saying, right? Like, yeah, it hurt my feelings, but nah, that ain't it. Let me get back right. right. That ain't it. I ain't about to right. judge this, man, because you can't be faithful to your person because the moment temptation hit, oh, I'm, I'm backsliding. Nah, you got you to gotta challenge that and because, man. Check this out. On, Check this out, bro. <laughs> You can never have full freedom if you're not the original creator. So mm. we're all going to be slaves to something in this world. So are you going to be a slave to God? Are you going to be a slave to your flesh? Are you going to be a slave to money? Mm. A green piece of paper? You know what I mean? You got to pick your poison. Which one do you want to be a slave to? And honestly, being a slave to the almighty creator who made us, who loves us infinitely and abundantly, and who is like, hey, if you follow me, like, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Like, bro, that's powerful, bro, when, when you can say, yes, I'm proud to be a slave to God. Mm. Because if I'm not a slave to God, I'm either going to be a slave to my flesh or a slave to money. Mm. People don't think about life like that. And everybody wants, everybody, bro, it's a red flag for me when people care about how I got to be successful more than they care about my relationship with God and my obedience to God because it's like that's the real key to my success mm. me being great at what I do is cool but what I can't explain to you is favor I can't explain to you the favor that I have you heard me mm. that's when you got favor I call it an unexplainable blessing that keeps humanity guessing mm. That's what favor is, bro. And people like, well, wait, but how you got that? D, how you got to Harvard? D, how you a professor at Tufts University? D, how you then got this many millions of streams? D, how you get booked so much to perform and speak? Man, it's mm. favor, man. That favor ain't fair, you heard me? Mm. And that's an unexplainable blessing that keeps humanity guessing. Like, how did that happen? Man, it's because I got a relationship with God that doesn't just look good on the gram, but it's something that God is like, I see you, young buck. I see mm. you down there. And that's why we got to be careful of, like, even, like, giving, like, praise to ourselves. Right? I was, uh, my deacon, he had, uh, he had did this fire, like, sermon or, like, uh, um, lesson or whatever, right? And I'm like, bro, you killed that. That was fire. That was fire. He was like, oh, praise the God. <laughs> I'm like, bro, why you can't just say you're welcome? He's like, bro, because it's not me. And it's funny because I, it's funny how, like, he was raising things, like, we was, like, install things but we didn't really understand it until we understood it when i was coming up my mom's never would say she was proud of me and she always said like i, I I'm, I'm i'm happy to see you here and I'm, I'm glad that god put you in this position or put you in a place to be getting all this stuff but i could never take the glory i could never take that that away from god because i i didn't do it mm -hmm. i can't be proud of you it's not because of me it's because of him mm -hmm. so she would never she would never say that and and i and of course i would come up not saying it too but mm -hmm. i never really understood it Mm. And then I'm, I'm talking to my, my deacon. I'm like, bro, nah, bro, you could just, I could, I could say thank you too. I could say, you. he's like, nah, bro, I can't take that because that ain't for me to take. Mm. That ain't the glory. That ain't the glory for me to take. It's for God. That's powerful. I, I love that mindset more than people who down here who call themselves gods. Mm. Man, I don't, I don't rock like that. Mm. When people call themselves gods, and when they, they think so much of themselves. Like I had a brother, not, not to talk bad about him at all because i rock with him but i had a brother on the podcast yesterday who he was arguing with me that like narcissism is a good thing you know being a narcissist is a good thing because that's the people who make it the furthest in life mm -hmm. is the ones that are obsessed with themselves and they're overly in love with themselves and concerned with themselves so that's why they go further in life 
But I was like, going further doesn't always mean that you're doing better in life. Mm. There's a lot of people that were still alive when they crucified Jesus. Yeah, bro. It was actually the crowds that called for Jesus to be crucified, you know? So it's like the same people that are building you up and making it to where you can go further. That could be the same people that are turning their back on you and call for your crucifixion. Mm, mm, mm. So my thing is like, yo, do I want to pander to an audience of 7 billion people on this earth? Or do I want to play and live for an audience of one? But even with that, right, again, just for sake of conversation and argument, like, that's like kind of moving. A, it's like I don't like that argument because being a narcissist or being narcissistic and loving yourself, it doesn't have to go hand in hand. Fact. Like, there you like, go. There it you doesn't go. have to go there hand you go. Like being narcissistic in my – can somebody uh, pull up the definition if y'all don't mind? Yep. I feel like being narcissistic is thinking so much of you over somebody else or making everything about you. Yep. Like I can love myself, yep. right? Because, again, like I just talked about my mom, it comes God, Jesus, then myself, right? I can love myself, but yep. don't have to be no more no, – no, no better than who you are. Yep. Like that's like – no. Like what do we – no. Here we go. A narcissist is a person who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. Narcissists think the world revolves around them. How can this world revolve around you when you didn't create this world? You ain't even create yourself. It's like, that makes, like, what's the people the saying? They have an saying? unreasonably high sense of self-importance and require constant excessive admiration. Who man, it... You, do you, bro, That's I, like killing I, I just got, everybody on the world to save yourself. I just got exhausted <laughs> thinking about having to live life with a narcissist on a regular basis. Bro, I just got exhausted when someone constantly needs praise and admiration because of their over excessive uh, sense of self-worth Worse. and self-importance. Mm. Bro, it, 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 it sounds exhausting. But when you think about it, it's a lot of people out here that's really just wanting to be famous bro so many people want to be famous nowadays because of social media that they will go above and beyond to just say and do things that have shock value to where they're like maybe this will be that moment to where i'm chasing that feeling of going viral or i'm chasing that feeling of being able to be popping or be famous and when they get a little hit of that and they get they get some views or some likes what happens is now they gotta outdo themselves. It's like drugs. It's like dopamine. Like now they like, even- bro. I gotta, I gotta say something even more crazy next time. So imagine these artists, bro. Imagine these artists, these women who have kids, and even if they don't have kids, they got mothers, they got grandmothers, they got people in their community who they know don't really approve of how they are portraying themselves nowadays. But these women are like, man. I mean, if I showed ninety percent of my cleavage with the last outfit. I gotta show ninety five percent of it this time for it to be more of a of a talking point on the blogs and on social media. And if I made a song saying that you know I I like to do this to a dude and this how I'm a you know give a dude this or do this to him da da da. The next song I gotta say that I'm gonna do this to a dude while another girl doing it to me and like they just gotta. It's like what can I do to go above and beyond? And we should have that above and beyond mentality, but it should be towards serving God. Mm, bro, it's crazy because that's literally what uh, dope, nah, crack does to you. So my mom's did drugs, right? And like, literally, I don't know if it's crack or dope, but one of them, like literally, people do it so much to that it drives them to a state of like death because they're always chasing that first time. Dang. That's exactly what it does. That's why they do it so much because like they're like they're never going to be able to feel that how that first hit that first high. They always chasing that first high. It's a show name um called Dope. It was on Netflix. If you get a chance to check it out, it was so it was dope. No pun intended. But it was one of the addicts was saying like, yo, like it's like I'm constantly chasing this this first high because the first high was the best feeling I ever felt in my life. Same with the, the the viral stuff, right? It's like you get a sense of success, and it's like I'm chasing it. I want to get this feeling again, but to what? To what expense? What's the expense? Your soul? At what expense? And that's why I say, like, but I, I, again, I'm me being human. I, I everybody we always had the question of like, would you rather be rich or famous? And I'll be honest, I always said famous because I always understood what I wanted in life. Like I always wanted to be the person. Like from my perspective, I like I. 
I'm like, man, if I gotta be the sacrificial lamb, so be it. I want to be able to tell, to be able to be so successful, so I can tell people like, yo, this is how we gotta do it. So if I gotta take that hit, I, like in my mind, I always be like, I'll be that that sacrificial lamb, cause I always wanted to, cause when I was coming up, I never understood the business of people on TV. I thought they was making all the money. I never knew to be the owner of BET. I never knew to be the. I never wanted. I never saw that. I didn't understand it. I didn't. I didn't. We were just talking. I didn't know that you could be successful and not have no fame. I never knew that. But like as I grew up, grew up, I wanted to expose that to everyone mm-hmm. because I feel like we all should know that, and we and it can save so many of us. It could. It could. It could. It could alleviate so many. Um, just heartaches, suicides, whatever. It could help so many people. And I always said, man, I'd rather be famous because if I could just touch everybody, man, like I just, I don't know, it's just, I don't mm. know, that's just how, always how I felt. I just wanted everybody to know the truth. Like that's just always what I felt. Bro, your heart is clearly in a very good place to where you want to serve God, you want to do so much good in this world. I'm curious, and I'm going to put you on the spot right Boy, now. Do you think? What do you feel like you can personally what area do you feel like you can improve in professionally to be more pleasing to God? Professionally? Professionally. I don't even understand that. Cool. All right. Like, meaning like with with what you're building your platform on, with what you're doing with your platform, with what you represent, with what you showcase on your platform, are there any ways that you can think that like, yo, for what God has gifted me to do, which is primarily to be, at this stage, at least a uh, a host, right? Mm-hmm. A podcaster, um, a, a host sometimes at events. Uh, you came and hosted my concert for me yeah, at that yeah. time. Uh, you know, is there anything that you feel like you could improve upon that would be more pleasing to God? Or is there anything that you're doing with your, with your current gifts or your platform that you feel like isn't pleasing to God? Mm. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure there's a few things, to be honest. Like, Cause I mean, I what I I don't know. It's hard to say. Cause when I when I quit the business, I don't uh, equate that. And it's funny because this is a new thing, a new way of thinking to me. Like I don't equate my business with like serving God. And I say that because what I think I can do better is outside of work, right? Like so, man, I don't even know how much time we got. Cause this conversation can go crazy. But so, um, I go to church on Saturdays, and like you know. I, Celebrate the Sabbath or whatever and things like that. And like and it says this in the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament that we should keep the Sabbath, right? And um, you know, God worked six days and he rested on the seventh day, right? Which is the, the Sabbath day. And I think what I can do better is continue to like, I go to church on Saturday, but I'm not keeping the entire Sabbath. So mm. I think that's something that I'm I'm working towards, to be honest. Mm. But when you ask me about the the business, it's like how I look at it as of now, right, just with the knowledge that I do have, this ain't really the the pathway to getting to heaven. It's really about what he be talking about in the Bible. That's keeping the Sabbath, Passover, like, and things like that. And, they, and those are things that I can do better, to be honest. Mm. Uh, my platform, um, of course, I have, I'm not about to say it's like I'm pretty, I have conversations I probably shouldn't, but for the most part, I'm pretty, like, I am who I am. Like, I talk about God, like, I am who I am on my podcast or not. Like, I ain't about to have no conversation. That Like, that's just who I am. You mm-hmm. feel me? And I be wanting other people to talk about, bro, let's talk about God. Like, let's get into it. Like, mm-hmm. that's just who I am. I praise him all the time. And the sure. reason the reason why I ask you that is because as men, so much of our self-worth is defined by our work. Mm. Like, we really pride ourselves on what we do. You know, what we do and who we are really overlap. So mm-hmm. that's why it's really important to make sure that in what we do, that we are being as obedient to God and as uh, and as as zealous and, and passionate about serving God in what we do as we are in just like our personal lives. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's. That's hard sometimes because a lot of times people like to be like, oh, God, yeah, God is for me, my girl, my baby, and all that at the crib. Oh, nah. That's God, oh, right? Oh, nah, mm-hmm. nah, 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 nah. Mm-mm. Nah. Because I see a lot of people, bro, who, like, bro, when you get in this industry and when you realize how rare it is to be a man or a woman of God who's proud of that and who cares about the industry 
And like, it don't have to be either. Oh, I care about this industry. I care about my craft. I want to be excellent at that. But I also want to do it in a way that is pleasing to God. You realize that that's rare. And a lot of times there's no blueprint to how we supposed to be navigating these spaces. So what I go through oftentimes is, man, when I'm, when I'm rubbing elbows with people that I know, like they need some of what I have inside of me, which is that love of God. They, they're in need of that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sometimes it might not be bumping elbows with them. Sometimes it might just be, oh, this person just started following me on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like we clearly live in to- totally different ways, at least according to how we're using our gifts and what we're making music about. But I'm now in proximity to this person. I got an opportunity to build with this person. And I've often had to challenge myself to be like, one thing you can't do is be impressed with darkness. Mm. You can't be impressed with it. You can't turn into a fan of something that the world is celebrating, but that God is not pleased with. Mm. So just because you're not impressed with the darkness doesn't mean that you aren't called to coexist with it and to help you know edify it and to help pour into it so that's something the pouring in part is where it can often be like man it's different when everybody just in this room and chilling and they just having a a a great time because it's like okay they're getting high they're getting drunk they just chilling they doing whatever da 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 and you the one that's in the room like man i'm on assignment right now Mm. God got me here for a reason. Like, I can't just be indulging in whatever going on. Like, I'm really here on assignment. So, like, what conversations should I be having with people? Like, what, what, you know, what, 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 what mood do I need to, uh, what temperature do I need to set in here? Because I'm, I'm put here to be like the, the thermostat. You heard me? I'm here to be the thermostat. I'm here to set the temperature in the room. Mm. Not to just be like, oh, wow, like they let me in here. I'm here mm. with all the cool people, you right. know. Let me just fall back and be quiet, you know. So that's something that I think about a lot, man. And that's something that I uh, that I I know if I'm thinking about it and going through it, it's only because I have a uh, a desire to, to please God. So therefore, I ask that to other people mm. who I feel like have that same desire. Yeah, no, I think all my stuff is outside of work, like really, truly putting God first, like, like not just, you know, believing and faith, but really truly putting them at the core of it. Mm. And that's like, you know, uh, uh, it starts with the Sabbath, just keeping the entire set, just being straight up with you. I think those are the things that I can get better at. Um, just as a Christian, like mm. this stuff, like this is just a, come along with the journey. You know what I'm saying? Like this really ain't, don't got nothing to do with, my faith in like where I'm at, if that makes sense. Okay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I'm trying to get better really like on assignment, like mm. doing what I supposed to do mm. to obey him for real. That's mm. how I look at it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. You think that uh you think that it's possible that if you start obeying God more, you think it's possible that you might realize like, man, what I'm doing, this stuff ain't even as fulfilling no more because I'm realizing that the joy I feel when I'm obeying God and, and when I'm over here in my personal life is nothing compared to when I'm having to lower my vibration, you know what I mean? Mm. So much to be in this game where, I know, bro, how often do you get inspired, bro, when, when you're around, like, people in this industry? Um, Again, this is hard qu- questions for me because, again, I ain't trying to make myself look like nothing, but this is the thing. This is why I'm not, like, super ahead where I want to be because, I'm not really that person to like like you're not about to see me with people I don't want to be around. Mm. I'm not really playing into it. Like you're not I, playing the game. Like I should be, and you uh, you can ask my friend. Like we talk about my, my team because it's like that ain't that don't do nothing for me, bro. But does it do something for the people that you have the potential to reach one day, and that you need that bigger platform in order to reach them people? Is it like oh I ain't playing the game for me, but I'm playing the game for the elevation I'm going to experience is going to be a blessing to all the people I'm going to be able to reach. I ain't doing it. You ain't doing it. <laughs> I like, I mean, maybe a little bit, like, can you help me? Like, I ain't really, in my line? Like, I'm not really, like, I, like I, I, I be like I be fighting with myself. I want to, like, I'm just being real. I'm being real. Like, I want to. Like, I want to be able to get the biggest people, but, like, 
it come with too much. I'm not with the goofy stuff. Mm. Just being real, like this not even like. Is there a way to play the game without being goofy? I'm pretty sure it is. I just haven't figured it out yet. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's, it's a constant journey, bro. People look at me, think I got it going on, and it's really a constant journey because even with the the amount of success I had this year, right? I'm gonna be straight up with you. It came with a level of of a learning experience that I wasn't even prepared for. And what I mean by that, like a lot of the big guests I can't, I got for the exception of like Ti, maybe uh, DJ Drama. Um, it came with other people saying. Yo, we like your platform. Can such and such get on your platform? And what that did for me was, I want to make it lazy, but I stopped doing what I was originally doing. And what I really was doing, I told you, haven't you feel me? I stopped that. So Play now, offense. when the text or the call stop, it's like, damn, what do I it, do it now? Got dry, yeah, because <laughs> you, you stop playing offense. Keep, keep it hundred. Stop being I'm hungry. Being, you keep, lost I'm, that chip on your shoulder. Yeah, I keep it hundred. I mean, I, yeah, keep it hundred percent. But I say that to say. But because I'm not playing a game, yeah, like I ain't really it ain't it ain't getting no better because I ain't outside. I'm not in people's faces, I, bro. I'm not like your man said. What you said downstairs? Um, he got a uh, what would he say? What was the word he said that he got to do? What like show people the cars? Like what? What was the exact? Oh, oh, oh um, signaling. Yeah, yeah. I ain't signaling. Yeah, and yeah. As much as my mind feel like yo, you if you could like you could really do that, and bro, I'm not. Yeah. That's what it is. I ain't so, and, okay. <laughs> like, okay. I yeah. ain't doing it, but yeah. So that's why I say it's, it's hard to ask those questions to me because I'm not the one that's doing that anyway. Gotcha. You feel me? Like, I ain't like this right here is dope for me. Like this yeah. is fire. Like this is yeah. Like and this might not do a hundred thousand, but it's cool because at least it's something that like I can enjoy mm. and I can walk away from like oh alright I'm good. Mm. Like, that was mm. good. Mm-hmm. Even when we ain't had no cameras, no mics. This is a real conversation that just feel good. Absolutely, and it's timeless. Mm. It's timeless, bro. That's the type of thing to where people will be able to look back in 100 years, and when you're giving real-life lessons and real godly principles to people, that advice never expires. Mm. Those stories never get played out because they wasn't fabricated and made up. They were real. Mm. When it's real, it's timeless. Mm. Yeah, my dog, I appreciate you so much, bro. This is... It don't get no better than this, man. Yeah, no, this feel this this feel natural, bro. Oh, I gotta I, I gotta do shameless plug right yeah, yeah, quick for that. what I got going on. So I got my tenth album dropping September September first. Mm-hmm. It's called Uno. Uno is an acronym that stands for Underdogs and Outcasts. Mm. That's who this album is dedicated to. What what was the last one? The last album was called God and Girls Part Two. That's one you went on tour. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. Oh, that one was finding balance. That's when yeah, I went Yeah, finding balance. Finding that was a project. Yeah, that was a project. All right, I know it wasn't crazy. All yeah. Right. So All I had okay. finding balance. Okay. I went okay. on tour. You hosted the Atlanta stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put out God and Girls two. Uh, so that came out after. Yeah, that came out when after. You that came out in December. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And now September first, I'm dropping Uno, my tenth album. Mm. Really excited about that, bro. Tenth album. Uh, that's longevity. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That that feel real dope. Yeah, I want to ask you this, um, because we talk about even downstairs about labels and stuff like that. Do you think you could, let's say you do a future with, feature with somebody, could you make music that's not like praising God, or I, I might be even in the dark. You might already do that. Yeah, see, that just let me know that uh, you probably ain't heard enough of D1's music mm. because my music is glorifying God. Mm-hmm. Although all of it doesn't overtly praise God. You see what I mean? Mm. So I can be glorifying God by just talking about anything. Talking about a real life story, but I'm not glorifying evil. Mm. If I'm not glorifying evil, then it's like I'm bringing reality to people. Okay, That's something that God would be pleased with. You know what I mean? Okay, Yeah, bro. Like my music, like... I got a song on a new album called Born to Pay Bills, right? Mm. So I say, uh, I say, uh, 
Sometimes I look around this world that we live in and I cry. So many people don't live life. They pay bills, then they die. And I can't lie. I really want my piece of the pie. But while I got you here, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Look how we grind like robots on an assembly line. But when our life is over, we can't get back none of that time. Mm -hmm. So what's your purpose? What's the reason that you're trying to climb? Got to be in love with the journey more than you in love with the shine. Just know this world ain't never going to respect you like they post to. They get so mad when they hate on you, but God still promotes. You. And when you stand on principle, they can never insult you. Yeah, I want my income, but I want to impact the culture. I'm not competing with you. No, it's me versus my potential. Protect your destiny. Don't settle for what life presents you. It's 10% talent, but 90% of it's mental. And when you make it to the top, it won't be accidental. Mm. Facts. That's just real life lessons. That's yeah. just that like, oh, man, yeah. okay. That's the, you nah, know you're what right. I mean? You're right. Yeah, like, so that's, 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 that's what I do, bro. Uh. Whatever title people put on that, whatever label people put on that, like, okay, he's this right, this type of rapper or this type of rapper. Man, call me what you want, but just make sure that your opinion of me is based on information and having heard the music, mm -hmm. and not just what you what you think I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you 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 my partner. Like, what would you what would you consider? You know what I'm saying? What would you consider? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I would say, what would you consider? My whole, you, you see my whole movement, you see everything I'm on. Again, bro, not, this is another tough question because it's almost like I don't even see you as none of that. Mm. And hopefully I'm not being rude or nothing. Like, right. I just see you as like my dog. Like, I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Like, I see you as D1. Like, I see your post and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I see it, but I don't really go out my way to see it. Maybe I should. I don't know. I just, mm -hmm. like, I just know, bro, like, like you're a good dude. Mm -hmm. Like you like somebody I can call my friend. Like mm -hmm. everything else, I don't, it's, 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 I don't even see. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, that makes a lot of sense. And I don't like I. I don't know if that's like I. I'm just thinking like I don't know if that's a bad thing. If I can need to be more intentional mm -mm. about, but it's just just to be real. I don't think it's bad. I think that um I just get offended sometimes when people in the industry want to call themselves professionals, but they don't do the research mm. to really be experts on what it is that they professing mm. you know what i mean That's so real. so before somebody called me anything you know what i mean you got people who you got people who still referring to stuff that i did 10 years ago that i accomplished but i could tell that it's like oh they don't they're not really keeping up mm. but when i do an interview with them they just hurrying up and yeah. Going on their phone and trying to hurry up and Google the first thing that come up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, man, that's that that's letting me know that okay, some people looking at me as just oh he got a lot of followers, so I want him on here, you know? For what I'm sure, saying? but that's what they gonna do. What you expect? I mean, I maybe I expect too much of people. I'm gonna say because like, bro, like they gonna do that. Even like, like that's the majority. Like, of course, what makes com this is what I learned, and this is this is dope that we having this conversation. The good conversations are the ones who are fans of you. That's yes. why they're so good. Yes. Right? I'm going to be real. Uh. But a lot of times they don't come. Like, and I had to learn this as an interviewer because I, like, this is something that I had to learn. Like, I'll I be chasing those good conversations. And I had to understand that I'm interviewing so many people that it might not come all the time because the interview that they have with somebody that they're connected with is going to hit way different than the one that we're having because they, they might be a little guarded. They might don't know where I'm coming from. You feel me? Like, it's different. Mm. But when I can have a conversation with somebody I'm a fan of, mm. it's like, oh, if I let me interview 50 Cent. Let me right, interview right. Lil Wayne. Let me interview Kanye. Like, it's different. Mm -hmm. Same with, the, like, that's why when you go on these interviews, it's like, I can see how it's frustrating, mm -hmm. but that's just work. It's mm -hmm. just the game. It's like, mm -hmm. they don't really mean no better. Yeah, they can sharpen up on that journalism style, but... Mm -hmm. It's yeah, just, they just playing the game. Yeah, it's just yeah. the game. Yeah. And sh you know what's crazy? Because you know, something that might irritate me a little bit is the opposite of that, right? Some I hate when people are like, how many times we get somebody coming here, they be like, oh, you did your homework. What did you expect? Like, right, what are you talking right. about? How many times we get there, they be like, oh, that's really an interview. Huh? Right, like, right. what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's because the bar has been set so low for them, and mm. they're so used to, like, man, they, this person about to sit here and, and just... Ask me whatever off the top. Yo, where we at, Kyra? Look. She. All right, so we. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. We. Yeah. Um. I was about to wrap up, but it's more to go. So. Word. That right there, right? Mm. Getting into we talking about, like stuff on the internet. I'm partially not mad at that, 
we talk about like you know journalism and stuff like that. So it, this this popular girl who's been going crazy, white girl, Bobby, who interviewed Drake. Yep. Yeah. So part of me, I'm not upset at the artists, or I don't want to say upset with the artist. I'm not upset with the artists who don't want to do the interviews with of the culture or like you know like real interviews with journalists because let's be real. If we have conversations, right? Let's say you did tell me, I don't know how how much you got, how much money you got. Let just let's say we we dive deep in the journalism bag, right? That can go so many places because you got to tell me the 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 things you did. Let's say we talk about the rap you did, Lil Wayne and stuff like that. Let's say that 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 go out and they go viral now. That's backlash on you, and you might not want that type of attention, right? When it comes to journalism, is a is a sense of professionalism and a sense of seriousness that everybody probably don't want. Mm. So I like everybody's mad at this Bobby chick, and I'm looking at it like, you know, would I love to have a Drake interview? Mm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But would Drake care to come and sit and talk to me when I'm gonna do my research and I'm gonna ask the questions that everybody want to know? And now he's on the internet, and all this is going viral, and it's like, mm-hmm. bro, I don't even care about that. I want my my music. Mm-hmm. When he could just go the safer route, well, I don't want to say safe, but it's just fun. Mm-hmm. We ain't talking about nothing. We just having fun. Right. It's gonna go viral because it's funny. Right. Ain't nothing to look too deep into. Yeah. So it's like I, I understand that. Like, and yeah, I, I don't even know if I don't know where journalism going at this point now. Gotcha. We don't. Well, you a part of it, so it's going where you uh where you help to take it. You know, cause you're a factor. Mm. You're a factor, bro. You're not an actor. No, I you're a factor. Yeah, I, but I just understand like people not wanting to have these serious conversations mm-hmm. because it's like like this this ain't hap- going to happen all the time. Right. Like th- so like I didn't prepare for this because it like for me it wasn't really an interview. It was like. My dog pulling up. Yeah. Let's just talk. I, yeah, I yeah. think we just planned this the other day. Yeah. But like, my other guests, they come in. It's work. Yeah, you it's feel work. me? It's working. Yeah, yeah. I understand how it probably can be frustrating for them because it's like, bro, like if I don't ask you these questions, then yeah, what are we doing? Like, yeah, yeah I do my research. <laughs> like, That's fair. You feel me? So That's it's fair. like, but do you feel like too much research can be a detriment to the interview? Too much research could never be a detriment to the interview because in addition to the research is the output of the information that you've received. So you research, you receive information on an artist, then you still as the journalist have to decide out of all this information, what do I want to highlight and what do I want to bring up in the interview to mm-hmm. the artist? And the way you bring it up, the way you communicate it, like that's that's important, man. So it's cool, bro. Uh, having people skills can really get you far in life, bro. That's a fact. Yeah. So. But even that, though, bro, like, I, I always say this interview all the time because she was somebody that made me understand that the interview was Zonique. And she really showed me that, like, because this was a great interview. But she just was like, her being vulnerable can just be hurtful because even though this is a great conversation, I got great people because I'm able to open, have her open up, but the people going to use her vulnerability against her. Against her. And that can be hurtful to the artist. So, like, as dope as I can be as a person, I'm still going to ask it. I can ask it a great way. And they're like, man, you feel comfortable. But it's like, man, do I want to give it? And it's not because you did anything wrong or I don't trust you or I'm not comfortable. But it's it's still the internet at the end of the day. And they can take it and run with it. Mm. And they can clip it up and piece it however they want. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like, <laughs> that's why I understand when, when, when Drake went to buy, I mean, Yachty, it's like, I get it. Because... Just when I was talking to Zani, like that's that can be a lot when your 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 life is always under a microscope. When your life is under a microscope, and when you f- if you feel the pressure to constantly have to outdo yourself in order to go viral and get some views, mm. that is a very uh, uh, pressure filled, uh, detrimental way to live your life, man. Like that's that's scary when you got to wake up every day, and as soon as you get in front of a microphone, you instantly thinking. What can I say or do that's gonna make me go viral? Now, outside of the viralness, though, but like just like just talk, having real conversations that can be you again. Like we were just talking about, like how it feel um, to grow up. Both of your parents are uh, like celebrities, big. I mean, stars, right? And like I know you had to like just be having just real conversation. I know that had to hurt when like they going on a tour and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like yeah, but I want to talk to you. But now, the moment I open up to you, even if you mean well, 
Okay. They don't. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So not even just the, 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 the sense of going viral, it's just having a real conversation. Yeah. And that comes from research. That comes from being a good people. But now it's like, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. There's there's two <laughs> words. There's two words that's life changing for an, an artist or a person being interviewed. And it could be very hard to say these words in a moment, but they can help you out a lot. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. <laughs> For real. Yeah, that's a fact. But don't that take away? From, but did that take away from the interview? You said take away from the interview. Kinda right. I'm gonna respect it, but but, like, okay. but but in the streets, if you don't talk, you get considered real. No, no, oh, you yeah. ain't told. The police was trying to interview you. You know, trying no, to interview you. Right, you, you right, you absolutely right. Yeah. But then it's like, what's the point of the interview, kind of? Now you, right, I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Like I'm not mad at it as a person. But it's like now, I mean, we still, we still a business, right? We still, but I mean, yeah, I get it, man. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciate you again, bro. My brother, I appreciate you, man. Bro, Thank you so man. much, brother. No Thank problem, you for having man. me. Yeah. Yo, so, that's it though. You, uh, oh, project, so the new uh, album, September Uno, 1st. dropping September first, and I got my first book dropping August fourteenth. This is why you didn't want to tell me how much they gave you in school. Hey, man, nah, nah, that's not why. I did because this is a children's book I'm dropping. It's a children's book. It's a hip hop children's book, and it's an anti-bullying book. Bullying in elementary school, oh, bro, it's such a such an epidemic that we gotta overcome, man. In it's, elementary school, oh man, I got bullied in kindergarten, bro. Like I know so many kids who get bullied. Now you got cyber bullying mm. in addition to real life bullying. But yeah, bro, and and, and that stuff, dang, it's crazy. I could still remember. Being five years old and getting bullied on the playground in kindergarten. So I wrote a book that, once again, it's an anti-bullying book, but it's a hip-hop book. You know what I mean? So it all rhymes, and it's like it's, it's super, uh, I don't want to give it away, but it's called David Found His Slingshot. Mm. That's the name of the book. Children's book dropping August 14th as, as on a, my website. As a kid in elementary school, if you could think back, can we even comprehend if I'm reading this book, to not bully? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because, yes. The dude that was bullying me, that's one of my best friends now. But back then, I think he clearly knew that what he was doing wasn't right. But he also felt like there was no punishment in sight. Mm. So because there was no punishment in sight, he did what he knew deep down wasn't right. And then... He came face to face with that punishment when I finally got some courage one day on that playground. Mm. And I did something to him. I mean, I beat him up. You know what I mean? That's not what my book is about. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about, hey, go no, beat I, up your I asked that because like, now I, I, said, I said it so boldly as if I wasn't bullied. In. So I was bullied in elementary school. Okay, and wow. Yeah, and I, I, like, I, I got held behind twice. Okay. Because of, one, me not knowing how to control my emotions, right? But two, and not most importantly, but importantly, was people were picking with me, so I felt the need to have to defend myself. Like, I would fight all the time. People call my mom's drug addict and all this and all that. So I'm just fighting for my mom's. Like, man, you're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they caused me to get held behind twice. But I'm just thinking, like, man, at that moment, if I'm trying to, if I'm an adult trying to sit down with a person that's bullying me, are they really going to be like, Okay, no, because the kids that was bullying me, I don't think they care. They they probably knew when they didn't care. So if they okay. gonna read the book, they ain't, okay, you know yeah. What I mean? Now they yeah. So the way I wrote this book and and the tools that I use in this book to help redirect that energy that you're using to bully somebody, showing how you could redirect that energy, like it's something that yeah, bro, people gonna love this. Mm -hmm. this, this this feel great, bro. First book. First time I ever wrote a book. So I'm finna go on tour with this thing. I'm That's finna, hard. you know, yeah, bro. I'm, I'm excited. So August 14th, David found his slingshot. It'll be available at my website, on my social media, and on all my platforms. But my website is missionvisionlifestyle.com. So, yep. I said I wasn't going to ask you this, but I got to ask you this, bro. What's up? Was just, I think I asked you on the phone. Did you ever think that this is what success would look like, bro? That's such a dope question. Huh. Never in a million years could I have thought that I would be able to be this successful by being myself, mm. by boldly glorifying God, and by every day 
having a passion for eradicating this world of evil and hatred. I didn't think that I could get this far doing it, and I didn't think that it would feel this peaceful. Mm. That lets me know that this success that I have is not worldly success. Mm. This is divine success. Fact. This is what it's supposed to feel like. It's so fire, bro. I'm so I'm I'm happy I can call you a friend, bro, for real. Like I mean that. I can't even mm. I know I said it multiple times, but I appreciate you, bro. Absolutely, bro. bro. I feel the same way. You know that, bro. We yeah. brothers. It's dope, man. I love you, man. I love you too, brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D1, J Hill, J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap, man. We out.